again to Blackout Pod. I have no good intro ever. I try to make it cool and it just doesn't work. Uh, I'm in a new little studio space here. I want to shout them out. Unfunny Network. Nolan Culver, thank you so much for having me. What's up, man? Good to have you, buddy. Yeah, dude. It's great. It's a great little space. Um, so I'm back again. Uh, I got to shout out my man Chappelle Lacey again for, for giving good suggestions for guests. Uh, but this this dude is a special one. Uh, he's the host of his own podcast called So Deep. Uh, he has been on your mom's house. He's a great stand-up. Thank you so much for being here. Steven Randolph. Yeah, thanks great for having you. me, man. So great to have you. Dude, seriously, like the, like the second I heard um, that you were on that podcast, it was like maybe a week after uh, Gabby and Chappelle that same day had been like, you should have Steven Randolph on your podcast. Oh, that's so cool. And so I listened to the whole thing, and I was in my car just like my mouth was wide open, just like, holy fuck, this dude is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just like it's also like I connect with your story. So it was just, yeah. you know what I mean? It was just, it was a fantastic little segment. And, uh, you know, it's it's rare that I love that podcast so much. It's rare you have somebody come on and get really real. And so yeah. it, was, it was the shit to hear something. Do most people, I, don't, I haven't listened to too many episodes. Like my buddy Kevin Blatt was on and yeah. he referred me. Is my shit leaking? Um, and, uh, and yeah, like, like do people, people aren't like, um, raw that raw on that podcast or what is everybody doing bits trying to be funny or something mm. or what's no the deal? it's just it's so it's it's a very silly podcast but yeah then, like the best guests are the ones who are just the most real so they'll come mm-hmm. on and they'll just be silly with them but then also like talk about themselves bobby lee was a great guest mm-hmm. um i'm trying to think of who else was awesome fucking ryan sickler is always awesome on there i'm doing ryan's podcast tomorrow at noon oh fuck yeah, yeah dude, honey, that's dude. gonna be great ryan and um and um Fuck what and Jay Larson, I I loved they had the crab feast. Yeah, it was a great podcast. Yeah, too. That, I I love that podcast. I love those people both, and I like um, Tom Segura and Christina P. They're both my favorite comics. Yeah, and they're very very. All four of those people are like. There's either my friend taught me when I first got into stand up. My friend Rich Aronovich, he said, "There's the good ones and the bad ones. There's good people and bad people in stand up, and like their act is secondary to just like either." The, it's a good dude or bad dude. Good chick, bad chick. You know, so like they're all good, good people. You know, yeah. it's yeah, important. It seems like the that's the vibe they give off. That's why I, I gravitate to people who just seem like they don't hide anything. Like it's just hiding. They're, they're normal. They're yeah. constantly angling. And they're just fucking, too, and they're all now. They're just two parents. They're just fucking. You know, yeah. they're just doing their their shit. Couldn't be more cool to be on the podcast. They're just like, hey, what's up? They just ate lunch first, and they're like, what's up? So what's your deal? You awesome. having fun at the store? I mean, they're just like, they're just normal people who are like who are living the dream. So like, I don't know. They they didn't. There's no air of any kind of like better than you. They were just like r- couldn't. Uh, couldn't wish success on two cooler more talented people yeah. and i i aspire and i know my wife does too i aspire to be tom segura and christina p oh dude that'd be amazing your wife yeah. chelsea skidmore yeah She's very very funny comic too i've seen her go up a couple of times very funny comic very yeah. funny person and a really good podcaster her podcast is incredible too what's her podcast called the chelsea skidmore show it's her guests are Chelsea led led a wild life before we got married, so she, her it's just a star studded celebrity filled fucking show, That's and so yeah, she knows everybody. That's so awesome. Yeah, I um I don't know, man. There's there's something to I heard somebody say. Uh, I wish I could give credit to whoever it was, but about comedy, what I try to do is take my biggest insecurity and put it out in the forefront, mm-hmm. so nobody can fuck with you about it. And that was the first thing I picked up from you on that podcast was you just like you were talking about shit that was clearly like raw shit Mm -hmm. and you're just like nobody can fuck with me on it because this is this is it's yeah this is it now is amazing yeah it was it's really there's there's something so like i don't know man people don't people don't talk that candidly and like especially on stage that's how i usually do it i you Mm. do you do that on stage too or you typically do more character work um, I do fifty fifty. Cool. I, I I went off the deep end with characters for the last couple of years, mm. and I'm pitching shows around that and stuff like that. So it wasn't like I'm glad I did it, but I also like lost myself in the process. So I'm like, it's nice to be just doing Steven yeah, again, you know, on stage. So like, I tell stories mostly. I don't like doing jokes. Like I have I have jokes, but jokes feel like jokes to me. It's like, oh hey, this quarter's coming out of my ear. Like yeah. it just I'd rather just 
do other things. I'd rather just share share my stories and there's jokes within the stories and stuff like that. But yeah, there's something to a, like a, a crazy story also. That's that just, to me is like the paramount to no, it's just inherently it's that, that was what this podcast was built around. This is mm-hmm. just, that's what my idea was, was just like the crazy stories. And it's inherently interesting because people either can't relate or they can relate because they've heard from, you know, like everybody has a friend who's done crazy shit. Yeah. Um, or they've done crazy shit themselves. Mm-hmm. So that was like, yeah, yours was like the pinnacle of that where it's like, yeah, he's airing all his shit out. That's amazing. Yeah. It was, it's it was just a yeah. wild story. I mean, the Bukaki. Yeah. You know, I took my wife to a Bukaki on our first date and ended up <laughs> participating. And God damn. It was fucking crazy. It yeah. was like, and I didn't think, you know, I was just like, oh man, like when you're living these crazy stories, it's not like this is going to be, at first I was like, oh, this is kind of funny, but then it fucking turned on me. And yeah. I was like, oh my God, dude. Cause I, I was, you know, still am like in love with Chelsea. And so it's like, you don't take someone you love to a fucking gang bang. Yeah. You know? And that I did. And it's just like, got fucking pulled right into it. And I, I'm just wow. like, dude, what am I? F- I'm sober. I'm like, what am I doing? You know, like, it just was wild. It was just, yeah. <laughs> You've been sober since '08. Mm-hmm. Man, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been sober like, like four. I think it's four years. Oh, cool. Yeah, it was, um, it was like just recently four years. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, you too. When's uh, when's the date? May 31st, 2008. Oh, wow. Hell yeah, dude. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah. So what? Uh, I never did get into opiates. I I was into cocaine and alcohol. Mm-hmm. Those those were my things. Uh, yeah, they're great. Where did you grow up? I grew up uh, not too far from here, Pasadena, California. Oh, about cool. Ten miles from here. Cool. I like uh, I like Altadena, man. I like yeah. Altadena is great. Home of Jackie Robinson. Um, you can see horses in California. Yeah, it's yeah. There's all the all great hiking up there. A lot yeah, of people are like, oh nice man, L.A. I have a big thing like people everybody from here is from someone somewhere else and everybody's like oh man LA is so fake I'm like just the people that move here from everywhere else like everybody from LA I'm from LA Jamar neighbors from LA like, anybody you'll meet from LA is just a regular fucking legit person it's yeah everybody from Toledo over here doing a character of themselves from home is the fucking moron dude it's 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 kind of like it's all of that stuff is counterintuitive to what I've experienced here because I've come out here to pursue comedy Mm -hmm. and like, I've just been like, I can't be anything other than myself. So if I make friends in the process, then great. And I've tried to hit it really hard and I've made the best friends I've ever met in my entire life. And it's just like, like these people who are just unconditionally like, you know, showing up for me and making sure I'm good. I've, I've hit some rough times in the last couple of months and they've just been there. That's cool. Like people who just want to do good for me just because they like me. And that's never been an experience I've had with anybody. And so like, I've met those people here in the seven months that I've been here. Well, you're vibrating at that level. I guess. I mean, like it's, you must be a good dude that, you know, that that's like a track. Like I'm just, I'm just trying to, I just, all I wanted to do was come be funny and be a good person. That's mm-hmm. all I wanted to bring. And so, like, it's just been, I think that's all that's been working for me. So, that's like, cool. I've, I've made these high caliber friends who are far better comics than me. And it's been so beneficial to just watch them and listen to them. Mm-hmm. But also, like, because they've been in the game that long and they've been through all this shit, like, they know who they want to pick for their friend group. So, like, yeah. they don't fuck around with who they hang out with. And they've just been, like, the the like mentorship but also just like bringing me into it yeah they just don't know how important it is for me so like so I'm, I'm older i'm 39 and um i've wasted a lot of my life wasted 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 a lot of my life with fucking daydreaming showing up to things that didn't fucking matter wasting time with people with fucking pussy with all kinds with drugs you know uh, all kinds of shit and that that's one thing though over the, like i think the last five years especially like I have zero, 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 zero time for just bullshit yeah. motherfuckers, bullshit talk. Bull- I just like, dude, I'm 39. I'm ha- dude, if I live to 80, it's half over. Yeah. It's half over. So if I have another coffee with someone who wants to have a fun idea, it's like, dude, what, what's the deal? What's your idea? Yeah. What's the deal? What Like, I'm pretty blunt as a person, but it's just like, like you're talking about, like that circle of friends, like... Dude, I have no just zero time, and especially working at the comedy store when it's when it's a very very sought after place to be. Definitely, I've had an, a beautiful, wonderful opportunity to watch how people approach something that they want, and I get I get a chance to see what I want to be like and what I don't want to be like, and 
hey, nice shoes, nice. As soon as someone starts doing that shit, get the fuck out of my face. Yeah. You know? Hey, Randolph, dude, love the f- caveman coffee shirt. Love the shoes. Yeah. Nice haircut, dude. Like, get get the fuck out of here, dude. Yeah. Like, get the fuck out of I just have zero time for just bullshitty people. I'll do business with them if I have to, but it's just like, I'm just really, really just wrenching down. Y- you are like the five people you spend time with. So yeah. my, my friend group is just dropping off by the fucking day because it's like, wait, what are we doing? What are you doing? You know, not like my friends have to do something for me or fucking... But like, I just I just can't be around fuck ups anymore. <coughs> I spent so much of my life just around being a fuck up and wasting time. I just that's not where I want to go. Yeah, it's so important to surround yourself with people <coughs> who aspire to be something. I think. Yeah. But then also just aspire to to make themselves better. You know, like just as a as people. Yeah. I think that's so important. When yeah, it's in like like do you know who Feng <coughs> Chao is? No. Feng Chao is the doorman, uh, uh, the Chow man from uh, China, straight out of Beijing. And um, and he came to the comedy store three or four years ago, just straight from fucking China. And he's not fucking around. And he he's a great guest to have. But he was a bit of a gangster in China, covered in head to toe in Chinese fucking gangster tattoos you don't ask too many questions about oh, shit but he's just a no bullshit person and he is and that is like that's a new friend he's a friend from like the last four years one of my i consider him one of my best friends in the world and he just hey randolph you're getting fucking fat what's up you're getting fat dude thank you i have been gaining a few yeah you're getting fat it doesn't look good on camera come on you're a star and it's just like and he like he's just brutally honest shows up on time he came over to, to my house to do my podcast and and Topo Chico is and I by the way, thank you so much, Pete, for um the, the mountain spring valley water. Dude, I was gonna you, bring you Topo Chico. I I had a, a like I was like Well you you just met me. You're that is that was like a big win. I mean just oh, a shit. very very not that you're like trying to impress me or have to impress me, but just as a as a new person in my life to greet me with the mountain valley spring water. <laughs> not a small one, but a one quart and one point eight <laughs> ounce, one liter of fresh hipster cool water yeah dude you just handed that to me the first you know the first second here's your mountain spring water just little things like this i need to do more stuff like this but like that's big that's a big thing and so like feng chow feng chow came to my house he knows i like topo chico he came with a four pack of topo chico to do my podcast at my house you know he's my guest so you know how like hey you want your guest to feel comfortable and he was like well i'm coming over to your house i didn't want to come over empty-handed you're my friend like i like isn't that what friends do and i'm oh, like, like amazing he just was so it's just so cool gave me four hundred dollars for my wedding like shit cash we have the same job we're at the fucking comedy yeah, store you fucking, know we're not killing it yeah, like it's killer and he's just like he's just like I'm, I'm fucking rooting for you you're a star don't forget that and so like once you start like it's like once you have the good coke it's kind of hard to go back to fucking sure. smoking weed yeah. like it's like once you have good friends it's like the shithead's gotta go yeah it's true especially like man like i don't know what it is where I'm from maybe is just like what breeds kind of this like there's only like people will only let you get past a certain level of getting to know them. Where are you from? Utah. I'm from okay. Salt Lake City. And like I don't know what it is about the culture of people are just nervous to mm-hmm. to be candid with each other. But like I haven't had like a good friend there since I was a little kid. And like I was always just kind of like an outsider anyway. Mm-hmm. But people will only get past a certain level, especially once you stop doing drugs and fucking around like that. Mm-hmm. Because they'll party with you and then tell you they love you when you're getting fucked up together. Yeah. But then the second you're just like, hey, I just want to hang out. They're like, oh, well, I don't, you know, maybe. Yeah, sure. Really? Yeah. Do you think it's the tattoos and, and the vibe? Like, I don't like know. the 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 rocker vibe that doesn't jive with just Americana Utah? Or- I, I guess, but then that also is a thing. Maybe it's because I'm not like a tough dude. Like, mm. I'm, I'm just a very, like, I'm open. I'm weird. I'm like fucking, like, I like to like play around and be silly yeah and, like people just kind of like to act cool there really like it's, yeah it's like a you know i think that's why i vibe with comics here so well is because everybody is just like everybody's here for the same shit yeah like it's just if you're a comic you're a comic and you're here to be a comic like and so like if you're both there for a similar reason you're not going to see each other as a threat you're going to get along mm-hmm. and just because by nature you guys are kind of the same sort of fucked up Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's just, I never, I just had so much trouble making, I, I never thought I, I never felt like I could be myself. Wow. And so the second I got out here, I was like, fuck it. I'm just going all in. 
That's so interesting because most people as an LA native, like most people do the opposite of what you did. Most mm-hmm. people are probably cool people in their states and they come over to LA and they, they try to be Axl Rose or they try to yeah. be fucking Jezel Neck. Or they're like, oh, okay. It's almost like I could see them getting off the plane at LAX and being like, what fucking mask am I going to put on yeah. in order to make it out here? I'm the cool guy. I'm this. And it's like, you know, I, I think if more people were just able to be who they were growing up or who they naturally were in this town, you wouldn't see, uh, it's it. I, I just noticed that, I've seen more comedy than than anybody should yep. working at the comedy store yeah. for five yeah. years, and it's just all the same fucking shit. And then one out of every ten person is doing something original and new, and everybody else, Chappelle, fucking starts hitting his fucking. Le- I saw it. I saw that. I saw him working out his special five you years know ago. Exactly what you're talking uh, about. Uh, right? Chappelle, not Chappelle Lacey, but no, but yeah, Chappelle. Yeah, Dave. Yeah. Dave Chappelle. Started after every punchline, started going, ah and hitting his fucking leg. And I went, I guarantee there's going to be a bunch of comics hitting their leg during punchlines. Yeah. Yep. And I was like, oh, there there it is. Like, yeah. ah, fake laugh, hit leg. Like, to me, get the fuck. That's what are you doing, dude? Are you you're telling you're, are you telling jokes? Are you, you know, what are you doing? You're 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 doing a you're you're in a fucking cover band, a Dude, Dave Chappelle cover band. It's bizarre how many people comic. you can pick out and who their like their main uh, influences because everybody yeah. has their influences. Yeah, but like just how many Dalias there are like yeah. how many people want to be Dalia and they'll delusional get on sta- oh my god dude <laughs> so many people get on stage at open mics and they're like oh but you're da 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 and they'll like do the head movement and yeah. I'm like you're doing Dalia that's all you're yeah. doing like stop do your own thing and he's original he's, yes. not, he's not copying anybody He, I, I'm a big fan of Chris Lee and he's He's a really nice guy, sticks to himself, doesn't cause any problems, works his fucking ass off, yeah. he's a, and he's a top-tier great performer. He's not – he's being Chris D'Elia. Yep, exactly. So that, that job's already filled. Chris mm-hmm. D'Elia's already doing Chris D'Elia. So you yeah. kind of got to do – I, I see that too. You know? I saw a Greg Giraldo guy the other night. It was like down to the voice. It was yeah. so weird. He's like, rah, 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 rah. and I'm like, what the fuck? Is yeah. this Greg Giraldo? <laughs> like, it was so, it was just like, just do it. And it's tough. It's tough to get up and just be yourself. I'm not saying I'm always yeah. authentic on stage, yeah. but it's just like, man, like, what do you stand to lose from getting on stage and talking about? the shit that's just like that you think is funny. I don't think most comedians in the scene, I I would say in the Los Angeles scene where I'm deeply based, I would say 50% to 70% of the people regularly doing stand-up comedy are very good actors who are playing the role of a stand-up comic on a fucking sitcom. And they're like, I'm a comic. That's why I wear this hat. We're all comics. We're all fucked up, right? It's yeah. like it's like I could just see the character breakdown on an NBC show. Comic, j- slightly jaded, leather jacket, <laughs> like you know, doesn't care, self depreciating, emotionally distant, like you know, hey, just that monologue. I'm, I'm a fucking comic. That's why I live in my car. You know, it's like, bro, it's like get the f- Tinder dates. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got out my fucking Uber. This guy, you know, it's like it's just you know, so it's like it's like you're a good actor. You're you're doing a very good job playing the role of a stand-up comic but what happens when the fucking mic drops or or someone heckles you in the audience or something other than what was on the fucking script your act little actor script what happened that to me is the moment when a fucking you could see if someone's a comic or not when the fucking plan doesn't go when their 20 minute monologue doesn't doesn't you know it it something's wrong with their their little set performance that's they're good actors. That's an actor to me. It's not I, a comic. There's a lot of, uh, I hate being that guy who fucking, like I just, when actors go up and you can tell they're actors. And it's they're an actor. To, yeah. And it's just, you know, they don't think that they have to work as hard because they're like, well, I'm only doing this until my pilot kicks off. I could smell that on somebody oh in, in a second. I could smell some, a lot of people uh, 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 abuse the the great, com- uh, you know, <sighs> comedy, you, you, you People come in, people come in it and they see it as a back door in order to be a star. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing, dude, I don't see anything wrong with that. Sometimes I judge myself, but I want to be a star straight up. Like I know it, it, that's not endearing. Brody uh, Stevens used to tell me, what do you want? I was like, I want to be a star, Brody. That's not endearing, Steven. You want to be a good comic. Like that's not, you know, he used to give me shit about that. But I'm like, well, that that's lying. If I was like, I just want, dude, I want to fucking be a movie star. Like I want to yeah. be huge. And I, and I know that's tacky and whatever to say. However... I am a comic. I'm a comedian. 
I was a class clown. I was always fucking around. I naturally, when I was on heroin, was going to open mics fucking off. Like, that was, like, just what, like, I didn't think of it like, oh, I'm going to, in order to get in these movies, I just was gravitated towards telling fucked up stories yeah. on stage and being in front of a crowd. So it's like, I think a lot of people are, they get a man, they come to this town, they get a manager, they're actors. Nothing wrong with that. I love actors. I love, I love watching television, watching movies, you know, but... Then they have somebody or a manager going, well, Amy Schumer, who's now in big movies, she, you know, it's a quicker way into doing stand-up. Yeah. And, and I think that people just walk in that route. And they're like, I'm here in order to shortcut into being an actor. And it's like, dude, don't, you know, a lot, there's a lot of us. It's just This is special, too. Yeah, they always – it's – I always – you can kind of spot – I'll do th- – I do three or four mics a day. And it's just like I do it. Because I want to get better. Mm -hmm. It's not because I think it's going to shortcut the process. It's because I that's what I have to do. And so it's just like you can tell by the way that people react and who reacts to to that in certain ways, like what their aim Mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. Because like I've had people be like, you know, you're not going to get like famous quicker if you do that. It's like that's not the point. I just like Mm -hmm. I have weird shit. I don't have material uh, material right now. I want to get on stage and just fuck around. And like it allows you 20 minutes a day Mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so you can always tell when somebody's like, yeah, I I do like three mics a week and then like I'll go to potluck. And then you Mm -hmm. can see him at potluck. They think that they're going to get up and then Adam is going to be like, you're a star. You're on Mm -hmm. family and friends now. And then they're the next regulars. Like Mm -hmm. it's not the way that it works. You just have to Go and trust that you're probably going to be doing it the same way 10 years from now. And so it's just if if you're in it for that, you need to just fucking get good at telling jokes. Mm -hmm. Like that's it. And so it's a long road. Yeah. And no shortcut. Yeah. And it's just it's a lot of, you know, you can tell by the by the jokes they're writing, you can tell by how they're going through their notebooks or if they are going through their notebooks. And it's just, yeah, you just you know who is writing and focusing on the crowd rather than focusing on uh, I've got an audition today and my manager says I should come to an open mic mm-hmm. so but yeah it's you know I don't mean to talk shit on those those folks everybody's trying to do the same thing in one way or another everybody wants to be special um, but yeah it is a very it's a different it's a big disparity yeah you see at LA mics yeah. especially um, but so when did you start doing stand up um, I did <sighs> I, I I was towards the end of my heroin addiction. I um I started I I wouldn't even call it stand up. I I I almost shot out the window of a, of a of a mic with a 12 gauge shotgun because I was really into performance art. I was really into Gigi Allen and I was oh, like shit. I was like, "All right, man, I'm going to go up and and just start telling stories." And because of of being from Los Angeles, I was able to like get a bunch of people out. I had no idea. I didn't know what to bring or show. I didn't know like that I would go places and and people because you bring a lot of people, whether it's a bar or whatever, people will want you back. I I didn't really have like a um, consciousness of what was going on. I just was like, it's time to start doing stand up. I worked with like the Jackass guys. I did a uh, I worked interned at Big Brother magazine down here on Wilshire was in a lot of like the skate videos and doing like punk rock kind of crazy shit. Um, and so I was like, all right, I want to start telling stories on stage and, um, and sh- bringing a projector along, showing some videos and then doing something crazy with the crowd. And I did that like, kind of like what Steve-O used to do. Yeah. He's still, my, my brother actually tours with Steve-O. That's what Steve-O still does. Oh really? Yeah. He, he does stunts and stuff on he stage d- He does too? all kinds of crazy wow, shit. They have okay. a whole, it's like, a, I would call it like a one man show. Yeah. So my, that's it's fair. wild. It's wild. Yeah. yeah. The improv. Dude, yeah. I have those. I used to have all those those DVDs when I was a kid. The Steve O DVDs. The, yeah, he, he, dude, good friend of mine. I'm I'm a friend, but I'm I was a fan first. I'm yeah. a huge fan of Steve O. He's that's awesome. Very very funny, very talented. And um, so my my brother actually um is his like road manager. Like sells all of his merch online. I mean not online. Uh, like at the shows. And so my brother was like. <laughs> This is this is, he's this is a funny guy to have on the podcast. But my brother, this is happening right now as we're we're speaking. Um, let's see what he's doing. Let me see if I can call him, dude. So so this, this is like is, present day. Yeah, oh, I thought is, you were talking is, about. Oh shit, this is right now. So so my brother is. We're both the same, but we're both different. He's a class clown, funny guy. Doesn't want the spotlight. Doesn't younger want to be older? younger. Okay. Uh, uh, doesn't want to be in front of the camera. 
he he shoots like a lot of the, like the Steve-O stunts and videos that he's been putting out like the viral videos my brother shoots those oh, they wow. edit them together my brother's in a lot of them Scott you know and um Scott Randolph shout out and so he's been doing that with Steve-O the last five years they live together they tour you know they're Holy they're very shit. very close close friends and um, it's a really good working relationship and friendship that they have. My brother moved into an expensive place this week, and he, or like last week, and he was like, he was like, yo, dude, all right, I need to find a way to make a little extra cash. Steve was very generous, very, very good friend to his friends. Yeah, he like, seems like it. He seems like such coolest, a cool fucking dude. Coolest, tips the valley. I mean, he just tips really well. He's yeah. just a good guy. He shares. He's, he just shares, and, and if, you know, I'm sure he's got to be a certain level of guarded with that kind of celebrity, that yeah. many people, it's nonstop. You kind of got to be like, yo, all right, dude, the fucking, get the fuck out. But if you're his buddy, he's a very good friend. And um, just remember how I said the good guys and the bad guys? He's yeah. a good guy. Yeah. Good one. Good guy. Helps homeless people when no one's looking. Help. I mean, just a, like his heart breaks every time he sees a home. He's just a good fucking good bird. But my brother goes, hey, I need to make some extra cash. <laughs> And Steve goes, dude, I'll throw you a few extra bucks. You're going on these world tours with me. Why don't you be my opener? And my brother's like, oh, I no, I don't. I put my brother's name in a bucket at the Ha Ha 10 years ago when I was doing mics. Oh, shit. And they called my brother up, and he was there just to support me because I was, like, nervous doing stand-up. And they're like, <laughs> he's like, oh, no, 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 that's my brother. That's so funny you accidentally said Scott. He goes, They're like, no, you're in the bucket. Come up. My brother went up and killed, but he blacked out, and he's just, like, a really oh, nervous shit. person, Word. right? Okay. <laughs> so, but he just like went crazy. He's got a funny, crazy life too. And so, but he, th he has no ambitions. And Steve was like, Hey dude, I'll, you're my opener. My brother's like, we'll do like, what kind of shows? He's like, well, we got 1200 in fucking Denver. We're gonna be 2000 in, over here. We're gonna God be 500 damn. tonight. So my brother, this last two weeks has been writing five minutes and he's calling me. He's like, is this funny? I'm like, no, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a, a five minute rant. And he's like, Steven, I need you to be my fucking brother right now. I'm like, Scott, <laughs> you need to tell jokes up there. And he's just like, no, he's like, Dude, I just need your support. I need your fucking support. <laughs> I go. He goes. I'm terrified. I'm not sleeping. I, he said, my skin's. I'm breaking out. And I go. Welcome oh, to fuck. our world, dude. <laughs> so he start. He's going to the Middle East. He's doing Dubai. He doesn't Holy have an act. Fuck. So he called me from the airport today. I go. How are you? He's like, dude, I didn't sleep last night. Let's see if he picks up. <laughs> Can you call him on the on the? Let's see. My I don't know if my phone's working right now. But my brother is so fucking nervous, and he's dude. He's gonna. He's about to be in front of more crowds than you and I combined in the Jesus next year. Jesus Christ! And he doesn't want it. That's. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's some kind of lesson there. Yeah. Please leave your message. Ah. Uh, damn. Dude. Yeah. So like, we'll, we'll give him a call. We'll give him a call. But but it's like there's a lesson in not wanting it. He doesn't want this, and because yeah. he doesn't care, it's, he's gonna do even better. Yeah, like, of he's course. Just like I don't. He has no ambition. He's gonna be terrified, it. and people are gonna be like, "This is fucking hilarious." This is hilarious. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's fucking tomorrow night. He won't have the desperation. None, He'll, dude. That's none. the worst. Is the crowd can smell the desperation. Yeah, and he he'll just be up there, and be like, "I don't, I don't know," and people will eat it up. Yeah, it's that's it's amazing. So funny. So he's, I mean, his tour schedule. My brother, who doesn't want to do stand up, is. His show dates, I mean, he's got 100 dates in the next fucking <laughs> three fuck. months, dude. All international. Paid. All over. Paid. <laughs> it's so I think He's it's making so, it. Dude, he made it. He, he doesn't even it. want it, do you know? Do you know Malik B? You know Malik, right? Why does that sound familiar? He hangs out with Chappelle a lot. He's a boxer. He opens for Callan sometimes and, and Jeff Garland. That sounds very, very familiar. Skinny, pretty black dude. Um, mm. I bet if you saw him, you'd know him. But he, uh, Chappelle brought him to Chappelle Ace. He brought him yeah. to Phoenix, and they were homies. And, and he brought him to open for him at like the Tempe Improv or something. Yeah, and he had never done stand up before. Wow. And he's like, I ain't never done stand up before. First off, fuck all y'all. I don't care. And like killed, just yeah, crushed. Because no one cares. Yeah, it was fucking amazing. And now he's he's a killer. Now. He's doing great. Yeah, it's funny. He's so funny. Really dude. getting yeah. all these opportunities, just just killing it. He was cool. uh, he was on that show the other night that Bill Burr was on at uh, at Flappers, like where he popped in. Um, yeah, he's uh, he trains Brian Callen in boxing, and also I think he's opening for him a bunch. Oh wow, um, that's cool. Yeah, shout out Malik B. He's he's a great dude. Um, but yeah, he's always with Chappelle too, making me feel not cool when I hang out with them. Let me see. Hold on. Let me see. I want to see if I know this guy. Yeah, Malik. I think it's just I think it's just Malik Bazil, B A Z. I L L E. Yeah, he had the right. You're talking about vibe. He just came in with the right. Yep. Everything. He's just cool, man. For, first That's time so he comes cool. up to you, he's got that right. He's cool way. as shit. He's yeah. super sweet. 
and funny. Yeah. Oh yeah, I've seen that guy around. Yeah, yeah, I've never seen Great him on dude. stage. Yeah, always, always in a stre- in a sweatsuit. I almost fought with that guy. So he, what? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he, 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 said, he said he's a boxer. Dude, <laughs> he trained me the other day. Uh, I did Muay Thai for a long time, and yeah. I was like, "Yeah, I'll come box with you." Yeah, and 100 degrees outside, and we just hit mitts, and my palms are still sore. Really? Yes. And wow. I, I like I'm at the gym all the time. He's like, "I'm gonna fuck you up. I don't care." And I was like, "Okay." Wow. <laughs> so I couldn't grip a pen that day. That's it was so crazy. Terrible. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. Shout out Malik. Dude. So my um, my my buddy Feng Chao, shout out Feng Chao, the China man. The the comedy store. There's group email chains. There's a yeah. hundred people on it all the fucking lawyers the managers the everybody it's like it's like 80 comics that work there 20 waiters and waitresses and uh and then like managers who who are not fucking around you know it's a business it's yeah. a fucking business and tons of tons of important people and so they hey all just a reminder blah blah, blah. feng chow re- <laughs> replied back this morning <laughs> and i'm gonna have to edit okay okay so this is you know renee lancaster he works at the comedy store. He works in the lot. Very funny comic. He put a picture of him just for no reason, right? This is a reply all to 100, 100 <laughs> people, like the comedy <laughs> store lawyer, the fucking talent coordinators, the of the La Jolla. I mean, like people that I wouldn't fuck with. You yeah. know what I mean? But he just doesn't care because he's from China. So he, he replied all to like a serious work email in the middle of the day at 108 today, so an hour and a half ago. Jody's the manager. Jody, thank you for being you. You do an amazing job. You are tall, kind, and care about everyone. Quick question about sexual harassment. And then he starts talking about this waitress <laughs> been showing her tits at work. I am not gay or nothing. I am personally very allergic to hack jokes and not top shelf tits. <laughs> if we do a pool here, I'm not the only one in this Me Too thing. Then he goes on to talk about everybody. I love everybody at the store. God bless freedom of speech. <laughs> American girls and bacon cheeseburgers. Have a great day. Uh, Renee is dumb. I, Fla- Abby Roberts, you know that is? He yeah. calls him Flabby Abby. And Quincy's shining forehead. Okay, here's a photo <laughs> of Renee. And everybody's just like puzzled. Like he just <laughs> said that. Like it just, he, he, and he said some stuff I edited it out, but he was like just going after people like in this email. It's like not, if anybody else did that, they'd be fired. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like, he, it's just crazy, dude. He just, he does that all the time. He went up to Mark, he called Mark Marin, Marky Mark. His second week working there, Mark Marin goes, I don't like being called that. Oh, Jesus. And he goes, you're a fucking comic, Marky Mark. Get used to it. Dude. And Mark Marin was like, uh, okay. And Feng Chao's like, yeah, you're a comic. Get used to it. And then he walks up to Bill Burr. I'm very funny. I'm from China. I came here to be a star. Can I open for you? If you look at Feng Chao, he's going around the world opening for people because he doesn't know it's it's very genuine he's yeah. just like hi i came here to be a star can you help and he's just like it, it's just dumbfounding us. when i first got to la not even moved here but just even came as a comic to just see what's up he was so intimate i met him and he was so intimidating oh yeah he'll fight you he, he grabbed a guy and i'm a i'm a i'm a I, I want to be liked. I like people, and yeah. he's the exact opposite. He doesn't like, like that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He's like, "What do you want? Get the fuck out of here!" Yeah. Like, grabbed a guy by his face and threw him into the concrete. Like, what? This guy I tried to attack somebody there. And Holy to... shit! Yeah, he's very, very wild. Very crazy. Damn. He's a great guy to have on. Yeah, that would be awesome. He sounds cool as fuck. Yeah, he's the coolest. Um, shit. Let's uh, let's see how long we have. We're like half hour probably. Cool. I want to know um. You obviously have no shortage of crazy stories. All all day, all every day. So let's hear. I don't know if you came in with one that you had in mind. Um, just anything you want to talk about. Yeah. Um. So I wish I had longer with you. Maybe we can have you on again. Yeah, I'd love to come back, man. Um, I'm trying to think. What What do you What do you want to hear? You know, man, just I think like what what was like the turning point other than the one you told on your mom's house mm-hmm. what was like that turning point story that you're just like i gotta fucking change you know what i mean or one where you woke up and you were like maybe i have a problem yeah okay this is this is one i'm this is what i'm talking i'm telling tomorrow on the honeydew ryan sickler's podcast he's um, uh he's on my show november 15th on this one pizza party uh my my produce show oh awesome yeah, awesome on that too um yeah that'd be cool uh that I, I had a uh, male. Br- I I when I went through puberty, I got tits, like a girl, and uh, yeah, and and it was it was the worst thing that's ever happened to me. And I went to an all boys Catholic high school with tits, and it just was a fucking nightmare. And um, I when I used drugs, 
I didn't have tits. I had a normal chest. It just was like it changed in my mind. I was like, oh, I, 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 you know, I was like really, really ashamed of it and really fucking really bummed out about it. And, you know, life went on and I was like, dude, I have t-. it made me like it made me a tough guy. It made me tough because if people would say something, I would just fucking go crazy. Yeah. And but it also made me very guarded, fucking hate myself, not feel like a real man. And so, like, that was like that, you know, saying even like now, dude, I've been talking about this for a couple years and I'm going to talk about it tomorrow on the honeydew. But, you know, when you brought that up, I, like in my heart, I was like, oh, I'll tell the tit story. But I don't tell this a lot. You know, it's really it's really painful. It still is. And it's funny as fuck, but it's still like it changed my posture. You know what I mean? Like, so I know people are listening right now and it's like it, it, y'all got everybody has that that one thing that they're just like bummed out about. I feel like it's kind of like my job as a comic and a performer to like highlight that mine and put mine out there in the hopes that other people don't feel alone for it. If you got weird ears or, you know, fast forward the story, just, I I got a surgery, but that's when it really got crazy. I relapsed after that surgery. But um, if you, if you have a nose you don't like and that, then you can get addictive with surgery too. So I'm not like that. Or, you know, if you don't, I, I got to be prettier, prettier, and you're doing, like, all kinds of stuff. Like, that's not what I'm talking about. But if you have a fucking weird ear and every kid, people tease you your whole life, you have a weird ear, you have a weird nose, you have a cleft fucking lip, you have a something. Dude, I had tits, and I went, I paid $8,000, and I don't have tits anymore, and that's gone. And this couldn't have happened 300 years ago. This couldn't happen 200 years ago. So just shout out to corrective fucking surgery. If you got something you don't like, the, the hardest part is making it Googling. I have a weird nose, finding the doctor going and sitting in that's, that's as hard as it gets. But yeah. afterwards people won't even realize that you had that. So if you, if you have something in your body that like modern, modern fucking uh, surgery, dude, I, I can't recommend it enough. It changed my fucking life, dude. It changed my life. And if you're like, Oh, I'm 35. I always had weird ears. People call me Dumbo, but it's just like, it's cool. It's not cool. You know, it's not cool. So, you know, you don't have to go through the next 30 years of your life being like, every time you brush your teeth being like, I have Dumbo ears or I have a fucking big nose. Like, you know, that's those problems are gone. It's like literally one slit. They sew it up and your life's fucking changed in two weeks of just watching eighties movies and eating ice cream and then going back to the world and no one even really notices, but you know now. So like, I just, I want to shout that out before we get into the humor and the fun that, yeah. So I had tits, man. I was fucking bummed out. I, I was coked out doing heroin. Always had tits. I always felt bad. I always wear a sweatshirt during the fucking winter. I mean, during the summer and I'd be like, Oh, I'm just crazy. And like, I'd have to play it off. So, so I went to rehab and this lady was like, they, they made me see this calendar and she was like, you're running from one thing. And I know, you know what I'm talking about. I was like, Oh my, and she like, you know, I was like, Oh my God. Like, I know what this, I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. I was never molested. You know, like a lot of people are like, you know, like with addiction was like molested something. I'm like, no, like, you know, yeah, of course, weird shit happens in childhood, inappropriate stuff, but I wasn't straight up molested. Um, but like, I was like, dude, I got tits. Like, and this is like, you know, and, and I'm not blaming the fact that I have alcoholism. It's a disease that affects 10% of the population. I'm not blaming that on the fact that I have tits, but, um, but like, cause there's plenty of people that have tits that don't have alcoholism, but it definitely fueled mine. And it definitely was like, dude, I want to get fucked up to forget I have tits. Yeah. That's how I was with being, I was fat. So I was really, like, yeah, dude. So I was like super insecure. Yeah. And I was, I was socially anxious because of it because people just bullied the shit out of me. So like, Hell yeah. I didn't want to make friends with people because yeah. they were just, I didn't want to open them up to be like, oh, you're fat. And then it's like, well, I trusted you and now you fucking, you know, now you fucked me. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. I, like, oh man, I can't tell you the pain from having tits, but like, so then this, this lady fucking said it, and then I was like, "Damn, dude!" And then I I left rehab after six months, and and I I relapsed, and I was like, "Dude, I know this has something to do with my tit. Like, this is like this is fucked up. I hated it. I hated it." And so then I'm like, "All right, I'm gonna do something about it." So I googled, "I have tits," and Doctor Corbin popped up, and it was this doctor, and he had a really funny video. It was like a rap video. It was just some fucking strange video marketing video for his website and he was in beverly hills 
and I went in and he's like, yeah, you got tits. And he had a Motley Crue poster on the wall. And oh, I was damn. like, I was like, dude, that doesn't make me feel good. You know, I'm like, my doctor is in a Motley Crue. I'm like, that's not fucking good. Garage but, band surgeon. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> dude, what were you doing in the eighties? I know not studying, you know, like you're doing <laughs> I, wanna, coke I wish like, I would have seen the surgery. You probably had like fucking like hot blooded <laughs> just dude, playing in the background. When I came, when I swear to God, I put this on anything. When I came in, was wheeled in for surgery he had the Rocky theme song playing just oh as I was God. going as I was going out. Damn. And so so I went and I and I I got this I got the fucking surgery and um and he had this he had this cholo assistant <laughs> uh, and he was like making jokes and I told them that I was a comic even before that was something I would do when I was high I'd tell people I was a comic but I but I never performed other than like these these random shows I was telling you about these like where I almost, dude, I almost shot the window out of a fucking place. That's that was my next. That was amazing. my next thing. I have a shotgun. I was like, all right, I'm gonna go up and act like I'm shooting the audience, then just shoot the fucking window out and jump out the window. Like, and I was like, that was a good. I, I was, <laughs> that I was going to do that for oh sure. My God, you know, I did. I, I I caused a riot in a bar. Whoa! I, like in Pasadena, this old town pub destroyed. I I. I purposely was like, I'm gonna cause a riot during my stand up, and I had plants breaking fake glass and the whole. The whole place was destroyed, and they're like, "You can never come back." No way! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah my friend, my like, like, that's a felony, right? It was, it a was, riot. Yeah, it was. It was a riot. Tyler it, the it, Creator got, I think he got arrested and almost got jail time for it. For that, in, wow! In, uh, at South by Southwest a couple years ago, wow. started a riot. Yeah, that's cool. I think, dude. But like, yeah, because <laughs> he's him, especially. Yeah, I just think it's cool. Oh, but like the power to do it inside a riot, it's like I would argue that in the court of law. It's like I don't have the power to make five hundred people. They yeah. they chose to do it. But yeah. I I would argue that one. But I caused a fucking riot. I attempted to, and I did. And uh But like, okay, so I go I go and get this this surgery and I have six months sober and I'm like I look down and like I had I had to wear a bra. I come out of surgery and I'm wearing a compression bra. My brother picked me up and he was like, Nice bro nice he called it a bro. He's like, nice yeah, yeah. bro, because of the Seinfeld episode. Yeah. I yeah. felt so, I was like so humbled. And I had six months sober coming out of this rehab, but I wasn't working a 12 step program. So I was like, I was like, all right, dude. And they gave me all these drugs to put me out. I'm like, dude, now I'm going to get, now I'm going to get fucked up because I'm like, I got the heroin back in my system. And I did do the right thing where I told the guy before, I was like, hey, just let you know I'm a heroin addict in recovery. He's like, good thing you told me. I was like, why? And he's like, now I'm going to give you three times as much, dude. And then he just put me out. And I was like, and I woke up all fucked up. Nowadays, with 11 years sober, if I have surgery, I'll call my sponsor. Like, hey, I'm having a surgery. I just, I want to check in about, they gave me Vicodin, blah, blah, blah. blah. You kind of like, you stay on it. But like this, I was just like, I was like, I have tits. I, I, I closed a real estate deal during a fucking coked out, a coke run. I put a house or I put an apartment building in escrow. And I didn't remember doing that. Damn. And so when I came out of rehab, I was like, I know what this lady's talking about. I know it's because I have tits. And I and then uh, a guy called me. He's like, hey, your building's about to close. I have 8000 or 10000 bucks for you in a safe. And I was like, what, for, from what? And he's like, dude, those apartments. And I was like, I had totally – because I was like doing real estate, like selling places but forgetting what like I was doing. Yeah, yeah, going crazy on coke and heroin. And I Damn. forgot that I put a building right before my family took me away – um to do you know and so this building closed while i was it was like a six month escrow so when i was away totally forgot what i was doing this this apartment buildings closed and i had money i had the money for the check it's kind of like if you really want something in life how how the how it, the universe will line yeah. it up i was like i needed eight thousand dollars to go to to get my tits removed and i got ten thousand and i was like fuck yeah so i paid eight thousand had two thousand left over i wake up from surgery and i'm not really like doing 12 step program. So I'm like, I had six months sober. I'm feeling the buzz. And I, and I had this Hollywood, uh, dealer. He was like the number one, the guy in, in upper echelons, 1% Hollywood. He only dealt to fucking huge, huge people. Oh shit. I just met, I wasn't, I would do two, you know, between one and $300 worth of drugs a day. Right. And you would think that's a lot, but like that not compared to his clientele. Like, so his clientele was like, bulk buyers yeah well just like super like record companies and fucking like kurt cobain kind of fucking guys and like just rock stars right yeah. and rock stars and like a-list or actors and like st- paramount you know what i mean he would go over to paramount and drop off thirty thousand dollars of the drugs for everybody Holy like he, he was just th- he was just this dude and i got plugged into him and he made it very clear like one time he was like 
he like oh this, this was the time he said it because I would always be like he would have you wait forever but it's like he just told me he, he would tell me like I deal to you because I like you I don't care about your fucking hundred and seventy eight bucks you know a day in coke or yeah heroin but so like I hadn't seen him in six months I I, I jump out of fucking surgery I meant dude it was a major surgery I'm wearing a bro I got a fucking pump coming out so a pump hooked to this little like football thing to if i i would pump it and because there's liquid just pouring out of my tits major surgery you're not supposed to walk around and get blood clots it's very very dangerous after after big surgery my mom works at a plastic surgeon she was like you gotta just chill for two weeks you get a nose job dude you get a fucking thing a facelift you gotta chill and people don't listen and then they fucking a lot of times they die like i think it was like kanye's mom or someone someone died that was i like my mom when she heard that she was like you know i know what she had like you have to like you you have to be very careful so i i jump up out of this surgery i'm like it's fucking party time and my dad and my brother are taking me home i'm like i gotta go somewhere to get something and they're like wait what and I am just groggy, and they're like, I can't let you leave. And I'm like, I'm a fucking adult. I'm going. I got to go. I called the dealer. And I was like, yo, dude, I need 100 of heroin and 100 of fucking coke, blah, blah. I haven't seen you in a while. And he's like, meet me up in the Hollywood Hills. I met him up. I'm behind uh, 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 Carrie Fisher. So oh, Carrie shit. Fisher's up there waiting for hers in her fucking – but I didn't know who it was. Yeah. And so she she was sitting and, – and he took like an hour to get to me. And I was like, yo, dude, Mike, what the fuck, man? I was like, you know, you had me waiting up here. And I'm like, I'm in, dude, I'm in the, I just, I was out cold in major surgery an hour before. And I'm in the fucking That's hills. So it's fucking wild, dude. Oh, so now shit. I'm in the hills, you know, about to do this shit. So, so he goes, uh, he goes, oh, dude, you, you're, Poppy, you think I fucking, you think, are you better than the Princess Leia? I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, you think you're better than the Princess Leia? And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, you see that Mercedes? How long has that been here? Has that been here the whole time you're here? I'm like, yeah, that was here before me. He's like, that's Princess Leia. <laughs> you think you're better than Princess <laughs> Leia? I came to fucking, I came to your car first because I like you. And I was like, dude, Jesus I was like, oh Christ. fuck. So he goes, uh, he goes, uh, gave me a hundred heroin and about to give me a hundred of coke, or hundred oxy's because I was like, I don't want to shoot up right now. And uh, and I was like, I just want to have a little fun. And uh, um. And he goes, what's, what's that on your chest? And I had a white shirt on and blood was starting to seep through. So it looked like two pepperonis, dude, on this white <laughs> shirt. And and he goes, what? He goes, I go, oh, I just had surgery. He goes, I cannot sell you the cocaine, Poppy. No cocaine. He's like, that's very bad for you. Very bad. When you're a heroin dealer, it's like, yeah. you know, like, he's like, it's very bad for you, Poppy. Very bad. And I said, uh, I said, no. Nah. I said, I want it. I want it. I want it. And he goes, no. I'm like, please, please. I was begging him, begging him, getting crazy. And he was like, oh, I do not like this. Okay. And he gave me a gram, and I and I did a bump with him in the car. My sh- tits started shooting blood, <laughs> Just squirting shit. fucking blood. So then he goes to fight. He gets out of there. He goes to Princess Leia's car, um, and uh, she party, dude. And so then I go down, and I'm like, I'm gonna get a fucking hooker. And so, and so I'm like, all right, all right, I'm gonna go get a fucking hooker. And so this was in 2008. So this was before, like, I didn't have an iPhone yet. I had one like six months later. So I went to Astro Burgers on Sunset right by the studios, and they used to have those L.A. Weekly, like, you would just go, you see those those hooker mags where there's, like, some girl in a bikini, and I just called. I went in there, and I was like, dude, what's the the worst thing I can get? And I saw this lady in the back with this bondage stuff. She's like, I'll fuck you up. Call me master. And I was like, oh, I want I want to get into this, dude. I was just out of my mind. Yeah. Just out of, so now I'm an hour and a half out of major surgery. I've got to fucking. feel some shit, right? Yeah. I've, yeah. Got a, I've got a bra on a pump. My tits are shooting blood. <laughs> and I'm on my way to a dominatrix hooker off Tampa Street in the, in the valley, right? So I get in my car. I'm fucking, my parents are fucking blowing me up, wondering where I am. My brother, everybody. And I'm on my way to this dominatrix hooker. So I walk in. I'm out of my mind, and she goes, "All right, take off your fucking shirt." She she looked like RoboCop. She was like in all this fucking this Russian chick, and all this like gear. And then she was like, "I'm gonna fuck you up to the ass with this fucking dildo." I'm like, "Let's go, let's break." It. <laughs> so she starts trying to fucking stick it in my ass, and I'm like, "No, no, I don't want it in my ass." And she's like, "No, this is going in your ass," you know. And I was like, and that, and then we had like this struggle where I was like, you know, I was like fighting her, like, and she was like, it was kind of like wasn't what I was paying for, you know. I was like, yeah. paid to fucking be dominated, but I didn't want, I didn't even want that. That's not my thing. I just was, <laughs> I just picked a weird flavor of ice cream. Yeah, you know? I was like, ah, I just want to, I just want to do that. So like, so. Like she's trying to shove this dildo up my ass. I still haven't taken off my shirt. My dick's like the size of a light switch because of the cocaine, <laughs> dude. And it's just a fucking dude, a humi- humiliating scene, dude. And so, 
And so she's got a dog collar around my neck. She's like, put this around your neck. So I've got a dog collar around my neck, a secret bra underneath, a blood, you know, blood pump fucking thing underneath. And then, and then uh, I go, she goes, take off your shirt. And I go, no. And she like starts feeling my shirt. She's like, are you wearing a fucking wire? And I'm like, no, I'm not. She's like, call me mistress. I'm like, no, I'm not mistress. She's like, are you wearing a <laughs> fucking, what is, what is this underneath here? What is this underneath here? And I was like, I was like, I don't want to tell you. She's like, if you're a cop, this is all legal, blah, blah, Because she thought I was wearing a fucking wire, yeah. dude. And so then I started crying, dude. I started crying and I go, I just, I go, I'm, I just got out of tit surgery. I fucking told her everything and started weeping. And she was just like, oh, what the fuck is going on? So I took off my shirt and showed her. And I just sat on the corner with my little ass dick and fucking <laughs> a, a, a bra on and fuck, you know what I mean? Like in a bra that was bleeding. <laughs> and then I whipped out the Coke and then she was like, you can't fucking do that in here. I'm like, I paid you for the hour. Can I just do the fucking Coke? She's like, no. And I'm like, I'm like, listen, I ripped off the dog collar. I go, dude, I'm six. I, I'm out of rehab. I'm an hour and a half out of surgery. She's worried about me. She's like, you just got out of surgery. You shouldn't be doing the coke. So now a heroin dealer and a fucking dominatrix lady are worried <laughs> about my fucking health, you know, out of this fucking thing. So then I go, look, I just paid for the hour, dude. I, I, I can I just tell you everything, dude? I got a lot of pain in my heart. And she was like, hold on. And I was like, can I do my coke? She's like, fine. So I start fucking doing all this blow. She leaves for a couple minutes. She comes back and she's in Disney sweats. So she went from like looking like this leather fucking dominatrix crazy chick to now she's in fucking like Minnie Mouse the sweats. The clocked out stripper. The clocked out stripper yeah. in sweats and she's sitting across from me. Like we have a coffee table or whatever and she's in, she's in a, a, on a chair and I'm on the couch. And I fucking tell her every – dude, everything that I've ever been afraid of. I tell her about the tits. I'm hysterically crying. She's holding me. She's like, it's going to be okay. I'm like, all I ever wanted to do was fucking comedy, but I was afraid that if I got on stage, all everybody would have to do is say, he has tits and that I couldn't do my act. <laughs> oh, and I'm, shit. I'm really funny. I have love in my heart. And I want to be married and all that. Dude, I told her ev everything, everything I've ever, every dark secret I ever have. And that's before I got sober. I, there's a, in the 12 steps, there's the four step where you kind of do an inventory and you tell everybody something you, you're supposed to share, you know, stuff that has been fucking you up. And I've always kept like a few things off there, but I told her. And so I just started feeling better and better. The more shit I was telling, her. I was telling her for the first time I was telling everybody everything. And I told her, and then I looked at my phone, and my mom's like, you better be at your grandma's house in a fucking hour. And I looked at her, I was like, I got to go to my grandma's house. And she's like, you can't go to your grandma's house <laughs> like this. I was like, I have to go. She was like, no, take a shower first. I was like, I got to go to my grandma's. And she's like, oh, I, I've always thought about fucking calling her back, you know, over the years. Because yeah. I was like, because, I, dude, I felt all this darkness leave me, right? So then I, I do all my coke. All my drugs are gone except for like two methadone, which I just had and, and like along with all the other shit. And so I go to my grandma's house and it was like an act of God because my mom, my grandma, they all knew everybody was like watching me like a hawk. I'm just newly out of fucking rehab, a six month like lockdown fucking live in rehab. And I'm out, you know, after surgery, they all think it's weird that I'm, you know, the whole thing. So I walk into my grandma's door and my sister, my nose is pouring cocaine. I'm about to be busted. And my sister puts a jalapeno in my mouth just uncharacteristically i walk through the door and she's like bite it and i was just like so coked out i'm like and i just bit this jalapeno my nose started pouring even more coke and my mom i walk in and my mom's like what the fuck is all over your face and my sister's like i just gave him a jalapeno it's not and i'm like it's jalapeno and it was like that moment where my mom was like am i gonna push this with him like this you know it was like because i was about to be like fucking back in rehab all this yeah. shit and my sister's like, I just gave him, and it was like the time stopped, and my mom was like, a jalapeno. My sister's like, yeah, look at my nose is running, and her nose is running, and my mom was like, it was just this, I believe it was like God intervening in this weird way, because I, so I stayed at my mom's, and she was just staring at me all weird, and I stayed there for like a half hour. I was like, all right, I just got out of the surgery, I'm going to go. I went home and like rested for like a day. And then um, that day, like, I, I I think I had my drugs, but I didn't take any. And then I, I called my old sponsor, and I was like, dude, I got to tell you everything. He's like, meet me by the Burbank airport. So I'm walking with him. I take off my shirt. I'm like, dude, Claudio, I have – I have tits. I just had this fucking surgery. And he was like, whoa. And I was like, I was never honest with you before. That's why I couldn't stay sober because I was trying to get sober with, the, with this guy before I went to rehab. And I just told him all the stuff I told this hooker. And it felt even better because now I was like sober-ish, you know, and I was telling him. And he was like, do you have any more drugs in the house? I was like, I have two methadone, but I want to take them 
because the step down from this oxy I've been taking the last yeah. two days. And he's like, dude, because he was a junkie that had like eight years, eight years sober at the time. And, and he was like, he was like, bro, you and I both know, dude, you haven't done it in six months. You've only been back two days. You don't have a habit again. You know what I mean? Like it takes like a week to get the habit going. It takes a month to get a heroin habit, but it then <laughs> once once you're hooked, it, it no matter how like I have like 11 years, like if I were to start again, you know, it takes like a couple, like it takes like a week, and then you're yeah. back, you're physically hooked again, right? It's a fun fact. Yeah, it is. I learned that from the the book uh, Junkie by Burroughs. Um, oh, I love that book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He he ta- he said that in there, but and that's true. And um, so he's like, dude, you and I, dude, you don't have, you haven't been back long enough to get a habit, bro. Just don't be a fucking idiot. Just flush the methadone down the toilet. And I was like, all right, all right. And I flushed the methadone down the toilet and I told him all my, I, so I told this prostitute all my secrets, half the darkness left me. I told him, and I just felt this fucking like this monkey just get lifted off my fucking shoulders. And I was like, what now? And he's like, well, we're going to start doing 12 step. And I was like, well, can I go to the beach? Like, is that cool? And he's like, dude, I'm not your dad. Like, yeah. And so like I was healing at the time at home, but like. After a couple of days of just laying down, I went to the beach and I started having fun. And that was, dude, that was May 31st, 2008. I've <laughs> never fucking used something the day after that, that night with a prostitute. And I always want to tell her, it was, it was telling her everything. It just like all that fucking lifted off my shoulders. So then that was like, that was my last day I've ever used drugs, you know? And in 12 steps, like I, I kind of watered down the story a little bit, but it was like after with a bondage hooker who's trying to fucking stick a dildo in my ass. And I, and I, you know, after tit surgery and that's like what it really happened. You know, I just told, I told somebody the truth that's about gnarly. Yeah, it was crazy. And then there's so many more crazy stories in sobriety. I started fucking, I, I was going down to Mexico and I got in all kinds of trouble sober, but that's a whole other podcast. How, how long do we have? Uh, five minutes. Yeah. Five minutes. You almost cool. at the end. Yeah, yeah. So, so basically, yeah, like I, I, I fucking, I don't have tits anymore and it's and it's awesome. And then I went to UCB to I'm like, I'm gonna start getting into stand up, I'm gonna start getting into you you know, all that stuff. And I started taking classes there and I went to go watch somebody perform. And this guy had tits and he was a very successful kind of up and comer alt comic guy and he was an asshole. I didn't like this guy's vibe, I didn't like him on stage, he was a dick. He's very unlikable and he's a fucking dick. But he had like the I could see he had the outline in his shirt of what I just fucking had. I was like, that was my biggest fear. And I got to watch my biggest fear play out. So so he's up there with tits. And I go, man, I can't believe this guy has the balls. To, you know, he's a very confident, cocky asshole of a performer. And it was at UCB, sold out night. And he's, someone heckled in the fucking crowd. And he said something to him. The guy goes, yeah, you have fucking tits. And I'm in the crowd. And I'm like, oh, my. Dude, 180 people laughed at this guy. The guy goes, what did you say? The guy, the guy was like this hipster, snarky dude in the audience who was a very confident, cocky person. Looked like Mark Maron kind of look. And he goes, oh, you didn't hear me? I said you have tits. Everybody fucking started dying laughing. I was like, oh, my God. So then this guy went back to this guy. He goes, why don't you get up on stage? You think you're a fucking comic? And the guy goes, I don't think I'm a comic. He goes, come up here. The guy is fucking in a scarf, got up on stage. He started making fun of the guy, and every, all the cr- crowd started laughing. And then when the laughs died down, he goes, but you still have tits. And, dude, that was it, dude. I watched this guy. like It was like a cheat. It was like a a, 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 a gazelle on the – like just getting mauled. And yeah. I was like, oh, my – that – I am so – that was my biggest fear. And I'm watching it happen to this guy. This guy's – like he was a part of an improv troupe. They came out to save him and they – dude, the scene ended like the whole – like I guess he was doing just like an opening monologue. The thing ended with them going, hey, man, it's time to go. And he did – he couldn't accept defeat. And the guy <laughs> said it every single time, just sat there. I'll never forget with the scarf on, just went, yeah, and you have tits. And everybody <laughs> was just fucking dying. And that – I mean – that was life changing. I haven't seen that guy since. That guy was on a few TV shows, and I always want to talk to him. I didn't like this guy, but I felt like it was my obligation to be like, "Yo, dude, like I got fucking Dr. Corbin over here on Canon and Beverly yeah. Hills." So, th- do, you, it, do you feel like it was as bad as you thought it would have been? Worse. Yeah, it, it yeah. was. Your fear it, was validated. Validated, yeah. dude. I mean that because like I and I'm I'm kind of an, an aggressive comic. I I'm not I, I'm not mean to people at all. But like I'm a shit talker. I'm yeah. fucking like live. I'm fucking wired up. And so that I was I was definitely would have played in the field where like somebody would have said the rooms I do are drunk and fucking crazy. Somebody would have said it. And I and oh my god, there's not dude. This guy was a witty funny seasoned UCB performer and I watched him just get fucking killed 
by one sentence, you have tits. That's all the guy said <laughs> five times. God. So, so I got to see that like right after having this surgery, and I go, oh my god, I'm so glad. And then I, you know, then now, now I'm back, you know, like, and it just feels good, dude. Life feel, life is fucking great, dude. Life is fucking so cool. Holy shit! I just, I just want to say, I think I've had it's up to almost thirty guests. Yeah, I haven't. That was. Th- no knock on any of my other guests. That's yeah. the best story I've heard. That's oh, thank by you, man. Far. <laughs> that was like I've never been like, holy shit, where's this going? Yeah, like, yeah. They all kind of have like a similar arc. Yeah, you know. I try Not to have that a one re- redemption. You know? <laughs> Not that one. Mm-hmm. That was that was the shit. Yeah, and I and I don't have tits anymore. I'm 11 years sober. You you can do it too. I was a needle using junkie who fucking had was almost dead was almost dead and here i am married 11 years sober fucking sobers can be thriving. happy thriving doing really Big well and stand up man. and fucking on the rise dude and and i could not get off my dad's couch that i i literally lived on my dad's fucking couch and in one of his back rooms like and i was a fucked up brother that they would all come over and cry and be like dude you had so much potential so and i and i towards the end of my addiction i couldn't even watch comedy because i was so heartbroken Going to turn on Comedy Central and see fucking people, you know what I mean? See, see, uh, thank you. See people, uh, fucking, you know what I mean? Doing all that, yeah. That I couldn't do. Are you kidding me? Like it was just so heartbreaking. So Dude, now I'm doing it. Fe- that's how I felt when I was like 25, 26. I was mm-hmm. like, I guess this is it. I'm too old to do this now. Dude, Which I'm thir- I'm how weird is that? I'm 39. It's just starting to take off for yeah. me. Yeah. Half the guys at the comedy store are 23 so cool. and funnier than me. You know, like, but like, not no, not funnier than me. But like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think so. But like. 23 and just as talented as in me very don't have don't have people. addiction um and are very clear and that you know they're where i'm at now at 39 at 23 so i guess i'm just sharing that with you guys to be like it's never too late like i'm doing it now and fucking i'm ready dude i'm fucking ready i'm not gonna say something stupid on coke i'm not gonna ruin it i'm fucking hungry i'm fucking ready and i'm showing up that's because of 12 step and you know all this shit i've been through dude so i'm fucking ready dude uh, can I give a shout out to my podcast? Absolutely, shit? yeah. I have a podcast. If you like my stories, I have a lot of crazy guests, a lot of personal stories, and, and I like to give a lot of hope too. It's uh, called So Deep with Stephen Randolph. It's, it's great on podcast. iTunes, Spotify. You could go to Stephen Randolph, S T E V E N R A N D U L P H dot com uh, forward slash podcast, where it's like the little musical note thing. That's how you can get there. It's on YouTube, uh, YouTube forward slash Stephen Randolph, S T E V E N R A N D U L P H. And I'm on uh, Instagram and Twitter, Stephen Randolph 2, the number 2, Stephen Randolph 2. Follow me. I'm going to be doing uh, Cobbs with with uh, Josh Wolf next month. I'm going to yeah. be doing a fucking shit ton of shows. I'm going to be on uh, Ryan Sickler's podcast tomorrow. And check out my uh, – check out my – your mom's house. That's so good. Yeah. I, I, I really went uh, – I went fucking 110 on that one. It was, yeah, it was a great episode. Say, have, say what's up. Say what's up to me at the comedy store. I work the door at the comedy store. Um, what is this podcast called? Blackout Pod. Say you heard me on the Blackout Pod. I like to know where, where people are finding me and hearing me. So if yeah. you're at the comedy store, just be like, heard you on the Blackout Pod, dude. Fucking come and say what's up. I'll give you free tickets. I'll walk you in. God damn right, dude. This is the shit. I'm gonna put all of Steven's info in uh, in the episode description too, and then I'll post it on Instagram. Go follow him. Uh, great comic. Just yeah, dude. You just you just seem like a great dude. Thank you, you just, dude. I just, yeah, like I, I don't know if that's like cheesy to say. People don't no. know how to accept that. It's just, you just seem like a good dude. Thank you. I, I've been so hearing that yeah. more and more, and that's that was really hard for me to accept. I had a, I had a core idea that I was a monster. Yeah. I was unlovable. I was a piece of shit. If you really knew who I was, you wouldn't fucking even be sitting having coffee with me. But like, I've done a lot of therapy and twelve step work, and I, dude, I'm I'm not perfect, but I am a good dude. I'm not I'm not a bad dude. I'm a good dude. Yeah. I really enjoyed having you on, man. Thanks, Thank you man. so much. This for is being great. Here. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Everybody email me, blackoutpod at gmail.com if you got stories. Uh, and then we will see you next time. I think I have a Nicole Amy Schreiber coming in soon. Good friend of mine. Yeah, she, I think she's coming in, in October. I don't know who's next, maybe. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Dude, um, I got I got guests up the ass for you if you want them. I got the weirdest <laughs> fucks you ever. A thousand fucking percent. Bill Posley, Feng Chow, Chelsea Skidmore. A thousand percent. Yeah. Yeah, please, I would love to have Chelsea on. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and everybody else who you would recommend. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll give you killers. Hell yeah. Cool, All dude. right, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Nolan. I yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, thanks Shout for coming, Shout out again man. to Unfunny Network, and uh, go follow me. Keep blacking out. Thank you, guys.